Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY23 conference call of Shimaru Entertainment Limited, hosted by Valorum Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anul Sonpal, CEO at Valorum Advisors. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anut Sonpal from Valorum Advisors, and we represent the Investor Relations of Shemaro Entertainment Limited. On behalf of the company, let me thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the third quarter and nine months ended of financial year 2023. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Mr. Hiren Gada, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Orgo Chakravarti, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Amit Harya, Chief Financial Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Amit Harya to start with his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anuj. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our earnings call. Let me first start off, start, start off by giving you some of the key financial highlights for the third quarter and third quarter and nine months ended of financial year 2023. After which our CEO, Mr. Hiren Gada, will give you some of some of the operational highlights. For Q3, FY23, the operational income stood at one, 150 crores, which has witnessed a robust growth of 66% on, on a YOY basis. EBITDA for the quarter was 9.4%. CR, which has declined by around 4% year-on-year, EBITDA margin stood at 6.31%, and net profit was reported at approximately 1 CR. For 9 months ended uh, of financial year 2023, financial income stood at 392, uh, 3 point, sorry, 392 crores, representing a growth of 36% year-on-year. EBITDA stood at 30, <coughs> 30 crores, which was up by 12% year-on-year, EBITDA margin stood at 7.75%, while net profit was 4.5 crores, which grew by 40% year-on-year. Speaking further on expenses, for the new, new initiatives in Q3, FY23, amounted to 22 crores, by, while for the nine months ended, it was 53 crores, which if you were to adjust this investment in the new initiatives, the adjust, adjusted EBITDA from existing operations in Q3, and nine months ended FY23 would have been approximately 32 CR and 83 CR respectively. Let me let me now take you through the traditional media and digital media division highlights. Traditional media revenues for the third quarter stood at around 58 crores, which was up 23% year on year, while for nine months ended it stood at 170 crores, witnessing a growth of roughly 26% year on year. Traditional media revenues for the third quarter stood at 91 crores, which was up by 115% year-on-year, while for nine months ended, it was 222 crores, witnessing a growth of 45% year-on-year. Now I would request our CEO, Mr. Hiren Gada, to brief on the operational highlights for the period under review. Thank you, um, thank you Amit, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I am happy to inform you that the company has surpassed its last financial year's revenue in the first nine months of the uh, financial year 2023 itself, which is a clear reflection that our new initiatives are on the growth track as per our strategic plan. In the third quarter, the advertising spends across the media entertainment uh, industry were muted primarily on account of uh, lower spends by new age advertisers on digital and due to inflationary pressures on the traditional advertisers. This trend, unfortunately, is expected to continue for the visible short term. The growth in revenues can largely be attributed to a lower base 
of last financial year viewership growth in broadcasting as well as the addition of a new channel shamaru umang as you are aware about a strategic transition from a traditionally b2b business to a modern b2c business i am happy to inform you that the contribution of b2c revenue in the total revenue has doubled in the 9 month uh, fy23 versus the same period last year and today it accounts for more than a quarter of our total overall revenues unfortunately the tepid advertising spends affected the margins of the company now talking a bit more about uh, the broadcasting vertical uh, in shemaru tv we renewed our content strategy which has helped shemaru tv delivered higher rating versus the previous quarter both the shemaru gc channels uh, have a combined viewership share of 10% in the overall hindi gc genre and have consistently been among the top 3 in the free to air gc genre the ratings of shemaru marathi bana have remained steady during the quarter <clears throat> on the digital media front we released 14 new titles under shemaru me gujarati during this quarter with content across movie web series and plays we released an original web series called yamraj calling season 2 uh, which was uh, a follow up season of our uh, hit uh, uh, web series yamraj calling um, and that was very well received by the audience we also did a digital world premiere for the blockbuster movie fakt mahila mate which was uh, among the top uh, grossing uh, blockbuster uh, gujarati films of the year on other digital updates we partnered with amazon audible for exclusive uh, podcast series like chanakya speaks etc on youtube shemaru filmi gaane reached 63 million subscribers and continues to be the 21st uh, most subscribed channel in the world in conclusion despite external uncertainties the company has showcased a strong top line performance all business verticals have grown year on year and our new initiatives are seeing very encouraging traction with the viewers we are confident that when the tide turns in the industry these initiatives will start reflecting good bottom line performance as well with that i open the floor for question and answer session thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of. Viraj Mehta from Equerus PMS, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Hiren. Yeah. Uh, Hiren, uh, if I look at your commentary in Q4 of last year, you reaffirmed that commentary uh, sorry, in Q1 the audio of the year. Your audio is very low from your line. Please uh, increase the volume of yes. your device. Yes. No, I'll. Yes. No, I'll. I'll talk a little louder. i'm saying whatever the sir said in terms of the burn that the new initiatives will see in q4 of last year in q1 of this year and in q2 of this year all of that has not proven to be right and you said that at the end of q2 results and it is way off by a significant margin can you please explain that here in my sir yeah. so um let me uh, uh so let me take a step back and uh, explain to you so at any point in time there is a certain uh, equilibrium of revenue that we are targeting in terms of the uh, revenue and cost right so we achieved that revenue cost equilibrium in the last uh, quarter now based on that we uh, and we at the same time were seeing very strong operational metrics metrics growth so if you see what we uh, are have discussed about the the revenue the share of uh, viewership share on the gc uh, uh, gc segment okay we were probably roughly at around 7 or 8% uh, viewership share and we saw the opportunity to take it up to 10% okay now that required investment and this is something that i have shared in 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 these same very uh, earnings calls that there it these uh, 
uh, once we reach a certain equilibrium, we would be investing and therefore as a part of that, we launched two new shows on Shemaru Umang in this quarter. We launched one show in September and two more shows in November and December on Shemaru Umang. Okay. Now, all of that requires a, set, a certain amount of investment. Now, what happened unfortunately this year was that while all the operational metrics were completely on track, the, the revenue side took a massive hit because of the A short uh, you know, festival period, it was a short Diwali festival period, the post festival lull and all the advertising challenges that we saw. So actually the revenue has for, is fallen short of what the commensurate operating uh, traction has delivered and that is really, uh, you know, that difference that we could have uh, otherwise generated. So we had targeted for the full year of 50 crore investment uh, uh, at the beginning of the year is what I have uh, shared and I'm completely cognizant of that. Um, if this revenue would have uh, kind of kicked in that we were fairly well on track to achieve that 50 crores uh, this thing but that revenue shortfall in comparison to the operating metrics growth that we have seen. So we were as I said we were in the range of about 7 odd percent viewership share the opportunity to dial it up further was available and we we really went for that because at 10% uh, please understand one thing that where we are today strategically in terms of the uh, position in the industry it changes significantly because you are now uh, you know in the reckoning as a player so you know and so that is really what we have uh, we have gone for revenue of uh, has not supported with the uh, uh, you know external environment. The choice was should we scale down that and uh, lose the momentum or should we continue and uh, you know press the advantage. We decided that we have to continue and press the advantage and we are very very confident that uh, given the uh, strong operational metrics as and when things turn we would be fairly uh, uh, you know all of this will uh, will reflect. So I don't, uh, I mean, I understand uh, what you're trying to, you know, where you're coming from, but, uh, you know, these were, these are some of the operational uh, realities. And is the higher cost coming only from newer content or is it coming because you're charging off some of the inventory? How is the inventory changed this quarter? Inventory is Marginally lower, we have charged off inventory. Uh, I'll tell you, we were at uh, March, we were at uh, about, seven, sorry, not March, September, we were at uh, 701 crores. We are uh, currently marginally lower at 697 crores. So, even though we have not even charged off the inventory, so yeah. this is just all costs which are, which are ballooning up. Other way of looking at it is uh, the revenue has actually not matched up to the correct cost, cost uh, the incremental cost that we have incurred, and that is the reason what Pirena yeah. is saying that the the shortfall of revenue is putting pressure on the margin. Uh, but sir, we our revenue has grown 36 percent this year. I mean, 150 crore in third and traditionally we have always done lower revenue in third quarter compared to second quarter. Correct. We have actually surpassed our second quarter number in third quarter and still you are saying we are, we are under delivered. I'm, I'm just a little lost here because this completely that, that, what you have been saying previously. No, I don't think so Viraj. I have, uh, this is something that has been consistently been uh, shared that once there is a, a certain equilibrium that we achieve, there will be uh, the next level of growth that we will be looking for, which is in terms of doing our original shows and uh, growing from there. And that is, I mean, you, one can uh, at any point in time go back and uh, uh, refer to. This is what we have uh, always shared. The, the gap what you are currently seeing or feeling or which even we have felt, I mean, I am not even denying what you are saying. The fact is that uh, the revenue has fallen short and that is across the industry. Right. 
And and in terms of the laws for this year from new initiatives, what will be your new guidance now? Having already done 52 crore loss or 53 crore in the in the first nine months. So, I mean, I can give a number, but given the whole external uncertainty on revenue, I at this point want to refrain from giving uh, a number. I think more importantly, we are uh, you know we would look to. Uh, you know, maintain the strategic or build on the strategic advantage and uh, positions that we are, you know, continuously building. Now, as a result of that, the investment may go up or down or may get extended by a quarter or couple of quarters. I don't see, uh, you know, I, I mean, when you are aiming for something, please understand one thing that at 10% of viewership share in the GEC space, we are you know, in every major advertiser's, uh, uh, you know, media plan, we are now no more, you know, a fringe player. And that's really a very important position to, uh, to, to build and to hold and to press an advantage when it is available. And that's really what we believe, uh, you know, because this business um, has a uh, long tail of, uh, you know, cash flow margin and profitability which is available. And... Uh, you know, in fact, I'm actually very proud of what we've managed to uh, to achieve and stabilize at these, uh, you know, these numbers. Right. Just one last question, Irene Bhai, is on finance cost. If you look at our balance sheet, is also deteriorating every quarter, reflecting in the finance cost going up every quarter from 6.5 crores last year or quarter, to 7.2, 7.3 crores last quarter to 8.2 crores this quarter. Um, I understand the investments, but now it forget existing TNL, but it is starting to hurt the balance sheet now. How, like, how do you look at this? So in the last call, call I had uh, uh, given uh, given a perspective that the way the interest costs are increasing. Uh, which is again beyond our control, the interest cost being increased by uh, the RBI and that is actually spilling over out here. Also, I would add... So, our borrowings have not gone up? No. So, September to December, our uh, debt is the same, exactly the same. Sir, but our borrowing this year has gone up from 236-237 crores to 270 crores. In first time. Yeah, so we no no that we uh, that that was in September, but I'm saying September to December the borrowings has now have not gone up. Last quarter we had a discussion on why the borrowings had gone up, right? I I understand on payables and on traditional media there is there is the payable as a lag and I understand that. Yeah, receivable. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. receivable. Thank you, uh, but, thank you so much, and best of luck. The uh, borrowings have not gone up. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Dhwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Hiran Bhai. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, so, uh, just continuing on this, uh, you know, revenue uh, part uh, where you say that you we have fallen short. Uh, so, uh, I mean, typically, uh, you know, you have a visibility of a quarter in terms of the commitments from advertisers because oh, no. I think no, okay. Oh, no. In fact, many advertisers we don't have visibility visibility beyond three days. Okay. Okay, so so in the middle of October, uh, you were not expecting this kind of a uh, uh, environment uh, for media not industry. Not at all. This was pre Diwali because it was uh, uh, it was in fact uh, expectation was and everywhere we were hearing you know sounds that it's a very good Diwali and stuff like that. But the advertising uh, space uh, took a severe beating uh, during that period, and not only that, it it actually continued in that whole trajectory, uh, you know, and even for, for example, YouTube and all where December traditionally is a 
is is a high month even that did not materialize okay okay so essentially what you are saying and when you say that we have fallen short on revenue but operational metrics we grew stronger so essentially what you are saying is that uh, the translation of this operational metrics to higher er has not happened is what you are saying to combination of higher er and even i would say in uh, uh, in some period also the fill re- fills have uh, uh, been shorter so that is on the digital side right i'm saying on the so traditional on traditional side okay okay so that means that we are not even 100% utilizing total uh, inventory in the I traditional side right? i think the last quarter this quarter it has uh, so uh, so how it works is we uh, our uh, ratings had uh, bumped up over a uh, over the last two or three quarters uh, and were in a good trajectory commensurate to that there is a, a certain er benchmark uh, that the market kind of works at with those kind of ratings and we uh, decided to hold those uh, uh, higher er benchmarks at which rate at which rate the fills uh were not happening at lower rates the fill could have happened but then we would have compromised on profitability further so we uh, and you know raising the er over a, a period would have, would have been difficult okay okay so so i mean how i mean again from a very novice perspective but how do we uh just that this uh, you know this reluctance of giving higher er uh, is a function of industry dynamics and not because our viewership share in somehow is not uh, you know as expected by the advertisers i mean how do we it's, how do we decide that's an internal thing or an external thing i am not able to understand the question <laughs> so i'm saying that uh, you have said that we raised the er right so but then you know there was some pushback because of which our field had suffered so essentially that means oh, that yeah. advert- our fill rate not suffered only because of the pushback it was also because of a tepid advertising uh, environment okay so what you are saying is even if we had lower the er we may we yes. might have the same so, fill rate so across the board fill rates were low across the entire uh, uh, you know ecosystem that is available okay. and that is visible i mean that data is available one can go and verify okay. that okay got it got it uh, and second uh, since you know rk is on the call uh, and uh, you know probably i think he in one of the interviews had talked about uh, you know that we want to double our uh, you know ad revenues uh, by fy24 so uh, one is that you know uh, you know what is the strategy around that uh, and then secondly in the uh, context of the change scenario to be still think that is possible and how do we look at that so let me answer the can you hear me uh, am i audible yeah. yeah you are audible so i think uh, as as iran you know spoke quite a bit around it i think the input metrics around uh, you know driving our viewership share to a position where we are a relevant player right now is is in the works and it is already happening a 10% plus viewership share means we are a relevant player in the market uh our er are also benchmarks have also been now are now according to what the market uh, you know, operates at at these kind of uh, ratings at this kind of viewership shares so uh and that you know and hence you know what what you know we talked about the fill rates the fill rates at an overall industry level has been down but going forward see it's a matter of time while you know we foresee that the next quarter will still remain a bit you know soft in terms of advertising revenues but we are focusing continuously on in keeping the operational metrics up and running and going in that direction you know we are focusing continuously on viewership share and getting our so i think we are already a relevant player in the ad market if you look at how the industry overall ad industry has been in this in this quarter it has been soft uh, but you know for from our point of view we are keeping our internal operating metrics up running and efficient and i think uh, we are very much on you know in terms of whatever i had talked about in the interview i think we are very much on in the game and uh, the tide once it turns you know we should we are in a position to milk the revenues which are going to be there so i think we are fully on to that the strategy is right up and there in place in terms of uh, creating the right infrastructure in terms of our operating the metrics 
as well as you know beefing up the right team with the right team i would add one more point the traction on the content uh, and the traction with the viewers also i think that is uh, you know very much in place okay got got i have more questions but i will join the queue yeah thank you participants to ask a question you may press star and 1 the next question is from the line of nitin sharma from mc pro research please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for taking my call uh, so uh, first of all would like to understand in detail how the overall ad market has been doing in third quarter and what are the early indicators this month i understand that it might be very early but just some color on it would be helpful Uh, so I, uh, this is Orgo here. I think uh, from all uh, from all reports and from all indications that we get from the market, and this is you know results of some companies here and there. I think uh, and you know obviously we are connected to all the advertising agencies. I think from an overall uh, ad market point of view, I think in the broadcast space as well as in the digital space, there is a softening compared to last year. uh and uh, while there has been some movement uh in in sports but from an entertainment uh ad revenue point of view there is definite uh, softening compared to last year and it is primarily because of two reasons i think uh, one is uh, the traditional advertisers have been uh, seeing those inflationary costs you know inflationary pressures because of you know input costs and uh, the new age advertisers i think uh, uh, there is a stress stress in the startup ecosystem i know that has also uh, put pressures on on ad revenues which comes at a higher price or not at a higher yield so it has been a double whammy uh, and of course the season has been the season was shorter uh, compared to last last for last year same quarter so so correct me if i'm wrong you are saying that uh, the fmcg's uh, ad spend continues to remain uh, at least where it was last quarter or last 6 months or, or maybe have you seen improvements there it is under pressure compared to even last year at the same quarter last year same quarter q3 on q3 i think i would be uh, it would be at the same levels or maybe even a little, a little softer than that understood understood uh, and second question so uh, on the next 12 to 24 months some understanding that what would drive your uh, traditional and digital revenue apart from the what is happening with the uh, the macro side of the things and how do you see your content cost uh, going ahead uh, on the same uh, timeline so uh, uh, i think there is, so there are two three uh, overall levers that we are uh, you know working on so one is the opportunity to further uh, gain viewership share is uh, is very much uh, available and you know we we are pursuing that of course uh, you know in in a way that uh, kind of uh, supports our cash flows and uh, things like that so not really going out of whack which is why i even uh, said earlier that quarter on quarter our debt has not gone up um, so but at the same time um, you know you know those levers are available on both television and on the digital side uh, and those will definitely be uh, you know drivers for uh, for growth new uh, new initiatives you know further and this is again something that we have in the past uh, uh, alluded to which is adding uh, more uh, tv channels or adding one or two i mean adding some more uh, cohorts on shemarumi those would be uh, uh, so i would put the levers in three uh, this thing existing businesses uh, you know to be dialed up further in terms of their own uh, you know offerings and uh, market share kind of a thing within the existing uh, uh, thing a newer uh, opportunities newer segments newer cohorts uh, that we would address and third would be of course the uh overall uh, improvement in the uh, you know environment which we believe uh, you know i mean in if india has to turn a 5 trillion economy in a certain time frame the gdp has to uh, pick up steam um, you know again and uh, if if with that happening the media entertainment in sector should be a large beneficiary of the uh, overall gdp growth so i think that 
uh, all the three levers are available uh, and which is in fact exactly why uh, in this quarter also we continue to push push the uh, you know the gains that we have been making on 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 the content side so your operation costs have uh, see gone down this quarter uh, gone up rather uh, this quarter right um, pretty much doubled over the last year so some idea how it going to play out will it be remain the similar level for say next 12 months some understanding would be very helpful no so uh, as i said earlier also so we launched uh, you know in actually we launched three tv shows uh, three more tv shows so we had uh, you know two earlier and now we have five uh, uh, daily shows amongst two channels put together so we launched two more shows uh, sorry three these three shows have added to the content cost while they have uh, delivered on the viewership the commensurate revenue uh, did not kick in so i believe that so if we have to uh, you know grow and invest in growth there is a uh, attendant content investment that is uh, obviously going to happen it's just that once a, a business uh, crosses its uh, you know break even equilibrium then the operating leverage uh, kicks in and for that the lever is definitely one of the lever is going to be uh you know are we making commensurate uh, revenue to the operational metrics which this quarter has fallen short so i'll just add one more thing uh, i think when you are comparing costs of last quarter to this quarter remember last quarter we had one channel less uh in the last year at the same quarter we did not have shimaru omang uh, whereas in this quarter this year this quarter we have shimaru omang so obviously there is a completely the story on the asset base is also very different right we have a different channel Uh, we have a new channel and a new channel having three new shows of which two shows of that out of the three shows have come in this quarter uh, and also remember the shows you know when the, the shows the two new shows in this quarter have come in the month of november and december the grp the 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 viewership shares coming out of that are coming out are are coming up and it will keep going up the shows keep strengthening if you if you know how it works when you launch a show the strengthening of the viewership keeps happening over a period of time You know, if you look at all the big players in the industry, they are big best shows run are running over two years, three years, and so on and so forth. Whereas our shows have started in the month, one month back. So the costs have come in, the viewership shares have gone up, but it will significantly more go up, and we will keep maintaining that trend. Uh, monetization is something which you know, as Hiran said, we have very strong belief in the economy. Uh, these are momentary trends which are have been stopped in the last this uh, last quarter, and we expect some. softness to continue going forward in this quarter as well but we have strong belief that it will all come back uh what we are doing is in terms of investing and making ourselves future ready to pick up those investments in the uh, pick up those ad spends in the market really turns so that's where we are uh, actually if i can just add so the cost of last year quarter and this quarter are not really apple to apple because we have a new channel which was not the last year the same quarter understood thank you i'll get back to the key Thank you. Participants to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Manwardhan Bait from Laurel Advisor Services. Please go ahead. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Just wanted to understand: Do we have uh, uh, an intent to add more channels, or are we done with adding channels? no i think every network keeps adding channels uh, on a regular basis and so will we so definitely in fact it's a stated intent every quarter i have reiterated that we would be adding more channels but the to uh, uh, kind of uh, add to that you know the addition of channel is only when a cash flow permits b uh, you know within a overall investment uh, discipline that we have uh, you know seen i mean if you overall see the way we have built this business and you know we as i said earlier our b2c revenue is now more than a quarter of our top line uh, this entire thing you know has been built uh, you know over the last 2 3 years in spite of all the covid challenges and everything channels have been launched etc our overall balance sheet has uh, you know not 
kind of gone out of whack or we have kind of maintained that financial uh, discipline and that I think is something that we are very cognizant of and will continue. I don't think that uh, that mindset or thought process changes. I just want to add something here. Uh, I think one is, you know, as Jiren said uh, and has been saying, you know, uh, we will definitely be looking at adding channels coming in the, in the future. Uh, it will be, of course, prudent and uh, well thought out from a financial uh, prudence point of view. At the same time, it has to also uh, gel in with our overall operating strategy. Uh, you know, to be a relevant and continue to become more and more relevant as a broadcast uh, player, you need to have a network. Uh, and the network needs to be a combination of multiple things uh, and how so any addition of channels will be only to complement our current bouquet and add to our strength overall as a network in a very prudent and uh, thoughtful manner. But yes, definitely we will be adding channels in the future. Uh, what has been the ROC of our uh, channels? I mean, if one looks back four years, three years, two years, one year, I mean, as the content ages, how would you break that up? from a channel to channel perspective? Um, so, I don't think one can look at it at a channel to channel level. I think it's the overall business that one has to look at because broadcasting, we were never a broadcaster. We entered this business. So actually uh, what happens is literally the overall business that it gets uh, diluted because of uh, one portion of the revenue coming from, uh, you know, maybe uh, the social media side or that kind of thing. So, and what I want to understand is the return on the incremental investments that you're making. Yeah, no, I was alluding to that only. So I'm, so therefore I'm saying one should not look at it at a channel to channel level. One has to uh, discuss it or look at it at an overall business uh, point of view. I think what this does is, so uh, let's take a step back and understand the context of uh, why this investment was made and what was the thought process and where we are in that whole journey. Uh, you know, that kind of will give a better uh, understanding of, uh, you know, you know, where things are and what is uh, going to happen or what, uh, how to look at the whole thing. So, I mean, we were, uh, you know, largely a B2B uh, aggregating content uh, kind of a player and, uh, what it uh, ended up doing was created lumpy uh, uh, revenue streams and also it had a heavy balance sheet uh, impact in terms of the uh, investment that one needed to make to acquire stock for trading the content. And very, very importantly, uh, you know, the brand which was at, you know, many years back of a significant B2C brand, um, you know, that was a call that we ta we have taken and this we have, I mean, shared consistently, uh, you know, through the quarters that this has been, um, you know, a journey of transition from B2B into the B2C business and which is where I today shared also that, uh, you know, now more than a quarter of the revenue is coming from various B2C uh, revenue streams. So, TV business we identified as a opportunity that has scale that has uh, um, you know um, a, a national footprint for the brand. Uh, it has a financial scale. It's a large revenue pie in terms of advertising spends, which is at about thirty-five thousand odd crores. Uh, sorry, twenty-five uh, twenty-five thousand odd crores estimated, uh, growing to about thirty-five thousand in the next about three years, um, and. Uh, you know, therefore, that's a, uh, a a business that we cannot stay out of, uh, and we have to uh, do the business. Now, how to do it in the uh, most cost-effective possible way? How to do it in the most uh, uh, prudent and uh, you know best possible way? That's how we set about uh, setting it up. Uh, we obviously got badly hit by COVID, so that set us back by, you know, quite some time because literally our uh, channel, we launched the test signal uh, and within a week the world went into a lockdown. So, you know, we 
obviously uh, got heavily or badly impacted by that having said that i think uh, you know happy to uh, see the progress that we have seen of this business and uh, if you see and compare the operating uh, metrics of uh, or the financial metrics of uh, various broadcasters i think you will uh, fairly understand the potential in terms of the cash flow the operating uh, leverage operating margin and the scale that this business uh, offers and that is something uh, while i understand that you know there are big established broadcasters we are a new player etc etc and which is why the relevance of reaching a certain market share and a relevant uh, being a relevant player uh, or the importance of that uh, gets highlighted and i think we are very much uh on the way to uh, you know to that whole uh, aspect and in that context i think uh, this has been a very very low cost entry strategy compared to what a, a typical hindi gc would probably need to spend uh, in this industry and i think uh, that's really uh, where we are i am we are you know at that point where we know that uh, it is now reaching the payback time and you know from here onwards or at some point onward not here but some point onwards the uh, you know the payback will be visible in in many ways let's also understand couple of more things only one is the content pipeline that is getting there that is getting added in terms of creation <laughs> has a multitude of monetization uh if we see the reports of uh, various industry uh, uh, reports one of the highest category of content consumed on the digital platforms on otts or even on many other including youtube is what is called catch up tv so tv shows uh, because of various reasons when people are not seeing on tv that that those shows are actually consumed heavily on digital media now this is all uh you know optionality that is getting created uh for us as we uh, progress on this so in fact in a way it actually helps us uh, you know cement the whole digital future far more uh, strongly so i think uh, one has to look at it in that context and uh, where we are in that context i think we are fairly uh, in a very very strong position in terms of the journey fair enough so you know i understand the qualitative aspect and the rational that you have put forward so i also wanted to weigh this with the quantitative aspect especially from an roc angle that when we yeah. approach the let's say setting up a channel or when we approach so what is the payback period or what is the because i mean see uh, this is uh, such is the nature of the business i mean it's almost like a i mean like a child in a candy store one is spoiled for choice one can keep spending on content and to achieve that number to be in the books of advertisers which are so that and it's it's kind of a that kind of a thing that uh, it's so so what happens is in this whole scheme of things one has seen many broadcasters not just in india globally also fail so that prudence uh, and that sort of how do we quantitatively look at it where i mean and end of it one also wants to see that i mean one can spend and achieve a certain market share in uh, in terms of uh, with the volume of content etc but there is also that frugality angle where one looks at a lot of broadcasters that spend a lot less and are able to achieve and that kind so even that aspect uh, is something what one wants to understand and one would like to see that uh, come in because uh, see the beauty or uh, the sort of uh, can, I, can, I, help you, can i just answer that you know we can yes, please this is a, a pretty long question uh so i think uh, there are two things you know and uh, while as an organization we have started this business uh, two years back uh, and especially as hiren said it started 3 years, years back, three years three years years back. back. Uh, 
and it started at a time when you know actually the you know the second the channel that came up first channel you know the after the signal came out we were hit by covid so i'm uh, so given forgetting all of that i think uh, one thing if you uh, i think we have as a stated objective we will we would we would definitely want you know to reach a certain level of profitability in this broadcasting business before we start you know uh, you know moving very very aggressively into you know getting deeper into it so i think that is one thing which one has to understand very clearly at the end of the day you are right uh, you know people can achieve broadcasting businesses can achieve uh, great good margins by investing less but not in the beginning i mean you are we are set, we are in the setting up process and we are playing in one of the most competitive and the biggest uh, biggest space also which is in the gc and hence we are in that uh, we are in that growth phase and our monitor as i said i mean a lot of the investments have actually happened of late in the last couple of quarters i mean that three shows have come in in the last two quarters of which two has come in in november december it is as recent as that you know so obviously the monetization of that happens over a period of time it takes a couple of two three months for the monetization to start kicking in despite the tepid environment that we are there we are very very confident that the revenues will start kicking in and uh, as an organization we have uh, we are very clear in terms of the prudence financial prudence with which we are going to start investing otherwise you know you are right by now we could have uh, we had the wherewithal and we have the pipeline we could have added five more shows also and that 10% viewership share could have been at 20% also so that's not how we are intending it we are taking uh, careful steps we are aware of uh what the situations are otherwise we would have we could have had it new channels by now also uh our objective is not that our objective is to grow steadily but uh, also be aware that it's a large uh, market there are a lot of players and we need to keep investing at a certain pace at least to stay relevant that's the way we are looking at it definitely not uh being we are not going to be a you know kid in a candy store and you know invest left right and center so that's not the objective very clearly and also if you look at uh, i'll just add one more thing uh, there are easy ways of gaining uh, there are other ways of gaining viewership share we could have we could invest in a non fiction show we have not invested in non fiction shows which are more expensive so we have been very prudent and careful in terms of our choices so that it yields us the right returns in the right period of time unfortunately the market is and has been a little tough in the last uh, couple of quarters and i expect it to be so in the next quarter also but we are very confident that things will rebound and our investments are being graded accordingly fair enough one last observation from my end so from the feedback that uh, i have got from the call so far the environment is outside our control to that extent to some extent the top line is outside our control and that way expenses on the other hand are controllable so given this equation do you think there is a need to increase the targeted spreads that you have sort of thought of in the past and going ahead because this might keep happening that the environment might remain tepid maybe the environment changes for some reason maybe uh, spends don't come or spends come with a lag or something on those lines so do you think there is uh, you know a need to increase increase that spread given that we've experienced uh, this particular uh, sort of uh, we've gone through uh, sort of this uh, let's say uh, the margin not meeting our es- uh, estimate in this quarter or do you think you will wait for some more time before uh taking this call no i didn't understand what you mean by spread revenue to cost you think that is controllable are you are, what do you mean by spread uh, are you talking about the gap between revenue and the cost yes from the operational cost perspective that i mean in terms of creating oh. content that is the only cost that is kind of controllable i mean to be honest at this stage uh, of the journey uh, you know i think uh, i would i mean we would definitely go for uh, building market share 
at this stage of the journey. We, we, we still are not in that top league to, uh, you know, say that we, you know, are, you, you can control, you have levers to reduce cost here and there and thereby improve your margin to protect uh, profitability. Uh, but at this stage, uh, you know, the journey is still uh, ahead of us uh, significantly and I think we would definitely wait. Uh, of course, we'll, you know, if things really, really don't uh, turn up, turn, uh, turn around in another quarter or say version, you know, then of course we will also be uh, taking calls according to that, no doubt. I mean, so if you see our history of last even in the worst of the pandemic and all of that, we, you know, controlled our whole, all our uh, cash flows and all of that, uh, you know, through internal accrual, etc., extremely prudently. Uh, and I don't see any reason, you know, to change that uh, orientation uh, for us. So I think that is a, you know, is a given. In fact, I would, you know, uh, you know, since you are talking about various broadcasters and globally and all of that, please do a check uh, around to see how much it costs to set up a Hindi GEC channel and compare that with how much we have uh, spent. This, you know, I can assure you that uh, we have been extremely, extremely frugal about uh, setting up this business. Thank you, Mr. Bed. May we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. Participants, to ask a question, you may press star and one. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Kiril, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, well, a couple of questions have been over already answered uh, in the detail through other uh, investors' call. Just a specific question on uh, how do we look at the debt reduction? Hello? Yeah. 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 So, how do we look at a debt reduction plan going forward? As <clears throat> as we also need to focus on building a content and spending on that. So, any 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 light on that and any monetization plan to or for any segment or any division which can help in that reduction uh, debt reduction. So, I'll answer second question first. I didn't point. Uh there is no such monetization plan for any of our segment or uh, this thing. Um, to answer your first question, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> couple of things. I mean, so firstly, we have been comfortably carrying this debt for last few years. Okay, I don't see our cash flows have been supportive and servicing even in the worst of the uh, pandemic, etc. We never delayed any of our servicing by even one day. Forget moratorium or any of that. So I really don't see what is the why should there be so much you and cry about the debt. Okay. Still, I understand and uh, you know uh, uh, agree on the need of having an overall downward trend on the debt, hmm. or at least grow the business commensurate to. <laughs> So that I don't uh, deny. I think uh, both of that is happening. So the, already in terms of the scaling back to uh, you know our uh, pre-COVID levels, I think we are hopefully we should be well on our way uh, if we uh, see the trends of the first nine months. Secondly, the second part in terms of on the debt reduction side. So let's understand one thing, uh, and we have been. The reason, one of the reasons why we have been also sharing the investment that is being made uh, in the new uh, new initiative. So obviously this year's plan was to, uh, or target rather, and plan was to invest or restrict that investment to about 50 crores. Given the external circumstances, that number has been overshot. 
uh, let's understand that there is a strong internal approval uh, of existing businesses happening. So once that investment uh, is getting, you know, contained within that uh, level, and once the these these uh, new initiatives are reaching that break-even and operation operating leverage, I think there is a natural cash flow availability to uh, to reduce the debt. Uh, also, the so for example. Uh, as we shared last time also, there is a, as this television business has uh, is scaling up, there is a certain uh, uh, debtor reflation etc. that is happening. That is, last quarter it has uh, caused the debt to slightly inch up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these are, according to me, transitionary uh, trends. I don't see that as a, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a trend because uh, we are not, uh, I mean, we have been extremely prudent about it, and I see that, uh, you know, as and when this uh, revenue shortfall kind of starts addressing itself, I think there is a natural uh, cash flow which is there from uh, other existing internal accruals available. So, uh, so hearing these, just uh, on the same context, what the objective was to understand the, where the margins will improve. So either the debt reduction can help through interest cost reduction or some spent where we have reached some peak on spending. So, so definitely yeah. it will not reach a peak, but... Yes. Uh, well, there is a, as I said, the, the commensurate revenue for this quarter actually should have been higher. That is what we've been trying to say. Okay, compared to the operational metrics that we, the business has achieved in terms of the viewership uh, ratings and uh, all of that, the the revenue should have been higher. So that would anyway give a, a margin uh, availability, right? Thank you. Mr. Hiran may request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Rahil Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you for taking the question. Uh, I have to repeat the question, but just on the objective side, like, do you have a number in mind when I ask you about the forecast for the revenue and EBITDA margins for the next year, financial year? Any sort of target or number you have decided you want to achieve? And also the same for the new channel, and when will they break even? Uh, yeah, just that. So the second question I have in fact uh, spoken about earlier, so I don't want to repeat that. The first uh, question I think that, so the annual operating plan for next year is currently being drawn out by various uh, businesses and divisions. Uh, so unfortunately at this point I am not able to give you a, uh, much of a, you know, visibility on that. But, you know, given where the operational position has uh, has reached. I think we definitely see a uh, you know continuation of the growth of a of a decent growth into next year. So uh, even purely on the operational uh, 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 basis. Now, if the market is supportive, obviously uh, if the industry is supportive. I think that will uh, add further. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Animesh Modi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Mr. Hello. Modi, your, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Yes, actually, I, want, I wanted to ask regarding one thing. How many uh, users we have in Shemarumi app? There is no number reflecting anywhere in the presentation. So I thought, let me take an opportunity and ask. And what is the growth uh, uh, percentage in terms of uh, subscribers of the Shema Room? Can you highlight? So unfortunately, right now, we are, we've are we not been uh, sharing that, uh, that number. I can only give a qualitative uh, view that the, uh, you know, the, the growth of consumption and uh, revenues is is been fairly strong, and we continue to have an extremely strong position in the uh, Gujarati uh, subscription market. So, 
you know, unfortunately, at this point, beyond that, it's difficult for me to uh, put out those uh, put out those numbers. Yeah, it's fine. And one more uh, question in uh, nexus of this that you know uh, there are subscription plan like one year plan or two years plan. So let's say if a uh, uh, anyone subscriber pays for two years, do you recognize the revenue in split between two years or in the year itself of the subscription? Uh, it's divided by number of months. Okay, by number of months. Yes. Perfectly. Fair enough. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Shrika Mehta from Equitry Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. I just have a few questions. Um, so there was an article in the newspaper uh, around 10th of Jan saying ad volumes on the TV side have grown by 26%, and our revenues for the nine months have also grown by 36%, but Q1, Q it's 66%. And we're still saying that uh, we saw a shortfall in revenue, which is why the new business uh, burn has hit us. So what trajectory are we looking for on the revenue side? Are we expecting higher revenue growth to uh, sort of, you know, reduce that burn or is that even sustainable? How do we look at this? Uh, let me answer this, uh, this Orgo here. I think uh, when you're looking at growth of revenue, you know, I know this, you know, we are getting a little, you know, uh, colored by the growth of revenue over last year. Remember, it is not on like-to-like -like asset base. Last year, we did not have a channel. There is a new channel in this year. So the growth, just hang on. So the growth may be a little confusing in this. Uh, the, what we are saying is the revenue is not commensurate with the, what we expected it in terms of the investment made. Because a new channel has come up uh, in, the, in this year, in a, from April onwards, then that channel is up and, uh, up and running in this quarter. Our revenue expectation was much higher. Uh, so what was our expectation, if you can quantify that? No, I'm saying, I, I'm, I will not be able to quantify it, but I'm saying despite the 66% growth which you are seeing, it is not the only metric to be looked at because the, there was one channel which was not there which is there today. So we need to, I mean, if the market would have been as per our, what we had hoped it would have been, which it has not turned out to be in terms of the industry ad spend. That's where the gap is, and uh, we will continue on our on our journey. I mean, I think it's not something which you said is not is there is no unrealistic thing in it. It's absolutely realistic in terms of what is going to happen. We don't have a option of not making that happen. It will happen. I mean, a, a few months here, and I think the trajectory is that. So I think the two yeah. things, growth and what is expected, we should just keep that separate. Uh, so, sir, is this a peak? Is this a peak level of our burn, or how should one look at it? Because, our, as we mentioned earlier on the call, it's already been three years since we started this journey towards our channels, etc. And uh, when do we expect this to normalize? Because the burn is just continuing. Is this the peak? I, I mean, I I think it's it's a so I think the see the in, see there, there are two three things in this. One is there is a we need to, while we are at 10% plus, uh, around 10% viewership share today, there is a there is a road towards you know being con being continue to be relevant in the in the space. I'm talking about purely in the broadcast space. Yes, we are there for three years, but you know remember that three years out of three years there was two and a half years of COVID. Okay, it's not a real three years in a real terms. You know that that one can say it is actually last six months only when things have been normal. Uh, so hence. We need to, and it's very difficult to say which is the peak burn or not burn. But at the end of the day, we 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 are sure that the you know the monetization of whatever we have invested in, in is in the right direction. The matrices are correct. The viewership shares and the commensurate benchmark uh, rates is something that we are able to achieve. It's a matter of when the tide will turn and the you know the fill rates will also match up, and how things will you know even out over a period of time. But it's very difficult to say which is a peak burn. Because the investment will continue. You know, we need to keep staying relevant. It's not that we are the only ones who are investing in content. So are others. Uh, but the market has not been uh, as uh, supportive. But we expect it to turn over a period of time. It's a matter of time. We have believed that the economy will rebound. Thank you.
Ms. Mehta, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. We'll take the next question from the line of Vanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Hiran Bhai and team. Uh, two more questions. Uh, so the first question is, uh, so I think look, uh, after listening to the entire commentary and answers, uh, the only question in my mind is that, uh, you know, we are kind of banking upon that we'll continue to spend and we'll get the good operational metrics, which will give us higher revenue and eventually we'll cover up the cost on the content side that we are spending and other things that we are spending. Now, what if our revenue, for whatever reason, some contents don't work as per our expectation, uh, and the revenues don't show up as per our expectation, then is there an upper limit? Is there a plan B? Is there a kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a, a level at which we'll Sanil, say that? Sanil, yeah. let yeah. me do two things. Let me say two things. One is, uh, A, Failure is not an option. I think we are very confident given our experience and presence in the industry. I think we are very confident of, uh, of you know, of making it uh, happen. Okay, number one. Number two, we are, you know, uh, we have a extremely active team. Please understand one thing. Being a player, literally the last player to enter this and, up, you know, pitting against 20-year-old players, and still taking away a, a relevant market share. Obviously, uh, there is a an intense level of uh, you know capability, maturity, and execution skills that the that the organization uh, has built and is carrying. Right. So really appreciate. we have a we have a, a continuous daily hawk eye on what is working and what is not working. Uh, it's obviously not been a smooth ride even to where we are. So things that have not worked, we have, uh, you know, uh, promptly jumped those things and moved on to the next set of things. So that is literally purging out what is not working is a is literally a daily exercise. It's not even, we don't, why would we wait for, uh, you know, even a week to uh, to complete that. Okay, okay. Uh, so second question is even by I think you alluded to one thing in last call I think uh, that you know we may uh, kind of change our amortization policy at some point in time uh, yeah. to reflect the digital uh, traditional mix. Uh, yeah. So uh, so I understand that we are currently at a stage where we are burning more money and hence we are not profitable. But even this higher amortization also will also mean that you know that even after we kind of reduce our burn, the profit may still not be visible. Is that understanding correct? I don't think so because, uh, so once, I mean, one is the policy is not yet in place, so I'm not able to comment right now. I I would say two things, uh, you know, you know, the once, you know, we have the operating leverage available, there is a cash flow available. Now that cash flow, uh, addresses many things, including the uh, you know long uh, long asked question of debt, of stock, of many things. So I think uh, you know that automatically reflects or will reflect around. So I don't see that as uh, much of an issue. Once I mean, I'm right, right now I'm not in a position to comment actually beyond the point. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, as uh, we've, we've discussed, I think uh, there is a significant uh, opportunity available in this uh, space. And uh, we have clearly uh, uh, you know, positioned ourselves to uh, execute and uh, take that share of uh, of the business and uh, we are very confident that uh, as the tide turns we are extremely well positioned to uh, take advantage of uh, of that uh, yeah with that i thank everyone for joining the uh, earnings call for q3 fi23 and uh, see you everyone in the next quarter thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Shimaru Entertainment Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Your lines.